So to begin using the delta function with Fourier transforms first, let's find out what the Fourier transform of the delta function actually is. Now in the following I'm going to use the Fourier transform variables t and omega. Uh, up till now I've used x and k, but it's time to branch out because the course is going to use both these Fourier transform pairs quite a bit. Okay, so first of all, the Fourier transform of delta t is just given by this integral here, and we know what happens when we integrate a function that's multiplied by delta t. It just selects out the value of this function at t equal to zero. So in other words, this, which is equal to one. So the Fourier transform of the delta function is equal to one. Now also, the inverse Fourier transform of delta uh, omega, so this is the delta function in frequency space now, the inverse Fourier transform of this can be defined like this. This is the equation for the inverse Fourier transform. We've got a factor of one over two pi out the front and the plus i omega t here. Again, this integral is pretty simple because it selects out the value of this where omega is equal to zero. So that means the inverse Fourier transform of the delta function is equal to one on two pi. Now there's a little bit more we can do here to discover something interesting. If we write down the Fourier transform of the inverse Fourier transform of delta omega, we must get delta omega back again because we take the inverse transform and then the transform. Okay, but this part here, the inverse transform of delta omega is equal to one on two pi. So this expression here must also be equal to the Fourier transform of one on two pi, which is equal to one on two pi times the Fourier transform of one. And that means this equation here tells us the Fourier transform of one is two pi delta omega. So we've discovered the Fourier transform of the delta function and also the Fourier transform of a constant. So the Fourier transform of a delta is one, the Fourier transform of one is two pi times the delta function. Or written out mathematically, it looks like this. Previously, when we looked at the Fourier transforms of different distributions like Gaussians and top hats, we talked about how if we have a distribution which is narrow in time or space, we have something which is very wide in the, in the Fourier domain, in the frequency domain. So a, a narrow function of time needs a, a lot of frequencies to make it up. Well, this is like the ultimate limit to this. A delta function is infinitely narrow in time. And its Fourier transform is a constant, which means we have all the frequencies, every frequency has the same amplitude in the Fourier transform. So there's an infinite number of frequencies all the way up to omega equals infinity to make up this infinitely narrow spike. If we look at the, the uh, Fourier transform of a constant, now a constant has no oscillations at all. It's not, there's no peak, there's no dip. So we expect this to have no frequencies. And indeed the Fourier transform of the constant is two pi times delta of omega and this is zero everywhere except when omega is equal to zero, which is no frequency at all. So this one, the Fourier transform of this infinitely narrow thing has an infinite array of frequencies. This Fourier transform of an infinitely wide thing has no frequencies at all. Another interesting function we can construct using delta functions is a so-called Dirac comb or Sha function. And we use this symbol here, the Sha symbol. And this is an infinite series of delta functions that looks like this. So it's a sum of delta functions all uniformly spaced. In this case, I've written it in the time domain with, with spacing capital T for the period between the spikes. So this would look like a series of pulses arriving at a detector, for example. And the subscript T here is the spacing of the teeth. So this is how we incorporate the spacing of the teeth into the definition of the Shah function. The Fourier transform of a Shah is another Shah. So it looks like this. If we take the Fourier transform of this beast here with spacing capital T, in the Fourier domain, the spacing is two pi on T. And so the Fourier transform of this Shah function here with capital T as the spacing gives us a Shah function with spacing two pi on capital T and a normalization factor of two pi on T out the front. And as you can see, the smaller the period in real space, so the shorter T becomes, then the larger the period in Fourier space. So smaller T gives wider spacing in the Fourier domain.